everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I trust and hope that you're doing great. I certainly am as I had a pretty eventful day at the beach. And so we're going to get straight into what is going on with uh, the tropics. We'll be talking about Tammy and we'll also be looking at the Caribbean because we know that there is some activity in the area and we could see something try to form as we head into next week. Models remain consistent and as such, I'll be showing you guys the latest. Now let's get straight into it. So we're kicking starting things looking at the Atlantic here you can see that there is some activity off the African coast and even as we drift further west a couple of troughs one of which is affecting the Lesser Antilles but uh, there is Tammy out there and it is interacting with a front and there's all that activity associated with it so it is gradually losing its tropical cyclone characteristics and will become post tropical very very soon so let's now go ahead and take a look at the cone forecast from the National Hurricane Center after which we'll move on to the Caribbean to see what is currently happening and what models are expecting. So as for the cone forecast for Tammy, here we can see that uh, the system is likely to become post-tropical by tomorrow and currently it is sustaining winds up to 100 miles per hour and we can see that there is some slow movement expected of Tammy as we head into this weekend and to early next week. So Bermuda, you might want to be on watch. There could be some tropical storm conditions as we head into this weekend. Go into what models are expecting on the track guidance. Here we can see that that there is more of an agreement now with the system making its way up to the north, making that curve very close to Bermuda and then back out to the northeast. That seems as though it is going to be the path that the system takes. So uh, there isn't as much agreement on the system actually continuing to the west, potentially being a problem for uh, the U.S. and other areas. So that is some good news. And models also show the system gradually weakening out there as it encounters less conducive conditions so there we can see them just going down it's cat 2 status right now because it is sustaining those winds at 100 miles per hour going down to cat 1 tropical storm maybe loitering in tropical storm territory for some time but eventually it will weaken and dissipate out there so of course i'll keep you posted on it and now we're going into the vicinity of the caribbean first up northern south america and the south caribbean is very very active as we can see lots of showers and thunderstorms developing this afternoon even going to the lesser antilles as well you can let me know what's been happening for you a lot going on nearby the abc islands are likely some activities through today you can let me know what's happening there as well going to portions of northern guyana venezuela colombia over into Central America. Let's drift further up to the north. And even for Jamaica, for many areas, it's been a pretty rainy day. So thankfully, we're having a decent cool down here. Even with intermittent showers, there has been a very decent cool down to help with the heat that we have been bearing for a while. Then over into Hispaniola, similar story, and Puerto Rico as well. As I said, for the uh, Lesser Antilles, even going to Trinidad, especially some thunderstorm activity earlier, but that's kind of clearing up. Maybe there could be some more. Uh, as we head through the rest of today for the Cayman Islands, Bahamas, uh, Cuba, portions of the Yucatan. There isn't a whole lot happening this evening and even for the Virgin Islands as well. Now, we are going to be taking a look at what models have to show. As I said, there is some consistency with that Caribbean storm that is expected by next week. Let's kickstart things looking at GFS. So the model is showing that possible tropical storm loitering in the vicinity of Cuba, the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos Islands, and even for Haiti as well. Whereas yesterday it was showing a very strong hurricane in the Caribbean. And GFS does this a lot with our future systems. There is inconsistency with the intensity and where exactly it'll develop. But throughout that uh, general time frame, it is showing something forming. As we head on to the Euro model now, going to the uh, latter part of next week, going to Friday, we can see that there's an increase in moisture across the Caribbean, but nothing defined. We're not seeing those circular squiggly lines or isobars, and they join areas of equal pressure. But we're seeing all those shades of greens and even those little spots of yellows, oranges, indicating all that moisture. So while Euro is not showing something forming, at least not yet, it is, it is uh, definitely showing that increase in moisture. Next up, the Canadian model. So it has been expecting that we could see something form as well, showing that we'll have a tropical storm at the point uh, at that point based on the pressure to the south of Jamaica. Then as we head into Tuesday, the 31st of next week. So it is showing this for early next week, making its way up to the vicinity of the Cayman Islands and toward Cuba before making that very close approach to Florida and making its way out as it uh, as it interacts with a front. Icon model. So Icon by Sunday is showing that 
that we will see a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm just offshore of Jamaica, making its way over the island, headed toward Cuba and getting pretty disheveled because, I mean, if it isn't strong already and then interacting with land, that is going to disrupt the circulation even more, resulting in some substantial weakness. So here we have the icon and the Canadian models expecting that as soon as early next week, we could see something in the Caribbean. But it is important to know that the uh, National Hurricane Center has not highlighted an area to watch in the South Caribbean, at least not yet. Although I think that we will eventually see that soon, maybe as soon as this evening or uh, throughout the rest of this week, we'll eventually see an area being highlighted in the Caribbean for potential development. So we'll definitely be watching for that. And I mean, as I've been saying in my updates, my recent updates. This is a typical origin spot for tropical cyclones as we head into the latter part of the season headed toward November. So we'll definitely need to be on watch and keeping in mind that there could be cases of rapid intensification once conditions are favorable enough, once there's all that mid-level moisture and the shear isn't a big deal and also the system remaining over water because we know there are a lot of Caribbean islands. So if it is uh, interacting too much with land, then more than likely we won't see much become of it. But if we're talking about the more ideal conditions being uh, persistent even for a short amount of time there could be some significant intensification I mean, uh, look at what has happened with even recently Otis over in the Pacific, which made landfall in Mexico as a Cat 5, becoming the strongest hurricane ever to make landfall in the Eastern Pacific, the strongest landfall in hurricane. And the previous record holder was Hurricane Patricia back in 2015. No, I'm not saying we'll see an Otis in the Caribbean. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying there will be rapid intensification, but it is possible. We have to speak about possibilities at this point in time because nothing is certain right now. Now, but the trends are there. The models are showing that we will likely see something. Icon has been pretty consistent about that low pressure area forming, developing, and affecting Jamaica. So my fellow Jamaicans and even Cubans, uh, persons from the Cayman Islands, going to Haiti, even the Bahamas, please be on watch. So uh, the entire Caribbean should be watching what's happening, of course, but more so the Western Caribbean for a potential development as we head into next week. And with those very warm waters, that can quickly fuel systems. Going back to Otis again, rapid intensification was not at all expected. The system jumped from a tropical storm to a Cat 5 monster in just around 12 hours only. That's half a day. So it really does not take long for these storms to rapidly intensify once the conditions are just right to allow for that to happen. So I'll keep you guys posted. Again, this is just to keep you informed. I'm not saying that you should be worried about a major hurricane making land for you again nothing is solid but there are trends that we will likely see development and i believe that will happen so that is what i wanted to share with you in this update stay tuned for my next one coming tomorrow morning and i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond to you when i can and remember to always be weatherwise